Hello, my name's Frank and I'm glad that you're here. Microsoft Teams is a great environment for teaching remotely and making sure that we're helping our students understand concepts by collaborating, sharing screens, doing all sorts of really neat things. But there are a lot of times when there's a feature we wish we had in Microsoft Teams and it's not there. Microsoft does a great job of listening to us. For example, breakout rooms was something that people have been asking for and now we have breakout rooms. But one of the things that a lot of people don't know is that Microsoft, when they release a new feature, don't necessarily release that feature to all of the customers all at once. So you may see certain features that another person has that you don't have. Well, one feature that I'm really looking forward to working with is the ability to run applications within a Microsoft Teams environment. What do I mean by that? Well, for example, I like to use Microsoft Forms quite a bit to take quick little surveys and quizzes that my students can complete so I can get feedback instantaneously and really use that to shape my teaching. Well, when I'm in a Teams meeting, I cannot go into the chat and create a new quiz or form in the chat. Or can I? Aha, that's what this video is all about. I can do that. And I can't do that within the Teams client itself, but I have a trick that will allow me to create a Microsoft form in a Teams meeting that students will then be able to see and respond to. And in this video, I'll show you how to do that. I've done a couple of meetings on using uh, different types of tools such as Microsoft Forms in order to get information from an audience that I'm working with. And it's a really useful tool. So if I go into a new conversation here and I go at, at Forms and I'm gonna ask a question and the question might be something like, uh, we'll create a new poll here. And underneath this new poll, I'm gonna ask a question what size tent oh, tent do we need? And maybe I'll have an option here, one person, and my other option will be two person. And I'll even, I can add multiple options in here. And maybe I even allow people to have multiple choices, maybe a two person or a three person. I'll add the other option of a three person. So people can have multiple choices. They can choose more than one. I can even make whether it's automatically sharing as soon as you vote and whether you're gonna keep the responses anonymous. And when I save that poll, I'll save that in and I can send that into my chat. And now it's here. I have a nice little poll here. Somebody goes in and says, well, I either want a two or a three person tent and goes in there and you can see that we have a vote here for a two and a three person tent. So that's, that's useful. That's really handy and it's something that, that I like to use quite a bit in my, in my chat here. Let's go into a meeting though. Now it depends on which version of Microsoft Teams you have. They're rolling out the feature so that I'll be able to do polls within a meeting. I'm just going to mute my audio so we don't get feedback. And I'm going to join the meeting. And when I go to join the meeting, I'm, right now it's just going to be a meeting with myself. And in this meeting here, We've got both the web camera and the microphone muted. In this meeting here, if I go into my chat and I say, oh, I want to find out what type of, uh, you know, what type of stakes do we want? Lightweight or, or uh, durable uh, tent stakes, tent, tent pegs. So I'll say here, add forms. And I'll say the question is, type of preferred stakes for the tent. And it'll be uh, heavy or light and I'll go and put that in it oh no notice it didn't really do much for me and if I go in here and go at forms notice it doesn't bring up that that forms bot so I can't really do a form inside of a meeting and that's because that feature hasn't been rolled out to everyone yet there will be the uh, point in time where we can use different applications within a meeting but that's not always available to uh, to everybody globally right now but I have a trick. So the trick that I have is I have a whole separate computer. Now in my case, I have a little Raspberry Pi computer, a little, little $30 computer running, and it's got a web interface on it, and I'm just connected to it through the VNC viewer. But it doesn't matter, any secondary computer will work as long as I bring up Microsoft Teams in the web interface, and I log into Microsoft Teams in the web interface. And I'm going to go into tents and you'll notice there's currently a meeting within tents and you'll notice I'm still logged in as myself here. So I'm logged into two places. I'm logged into my meeting here and I'm logged into 
Teams on the web interface here. I'm going to join that meeting. So when I join that meeting, and we'll just mute the audio and the video. When I join that meeting, I'm going to connect up. And when I connect up, it's going to show that currently in this meeting, it is just me. So it's waiting for other people to join. And if I go back to my meeting client, you'll notice it's just me. So this is me and this is ghost me. I'm in the meeting twice, but I'm in the meeting on different devices. This one here, I'm on a Windows machine running the meetings client. And on this one here, I'm in a little web interface, in my case, a Raspberry Pi, but it could just as easily be uh, an, an Apple computer, could just any computer with a web interface. I'm just web connected to the meeting. And when I go into the chat here, in the web interface, notice what happens here if I type in at forms. It works. It'll actually bring up that little forms application. And when I click on forms, it's going to ask me what I want to do. Now it's a little bit blocked out because of the resolution here, but if I click on here, I can collect real time data with a forms poll. And it brings up a forms poll within the chat. And my question here is now going to be, uh, you know, what is your favorite tent maker? So we say, what's your favorite tent maker? And maybe the, the options will be Hilleberg or it might be North Face. There's a whole bunch of different tent makers out there and I won't allow you have to choose one. That's your favorite. And I'm going to save that. And I go in there and I can submit a little quick poll in there. Now I've go down here, I can send it in and that's now going to be sent into the chat. Notice it appears on my web interface, but what's really interesting is that it also appears on my meeting interface. So I can't access it or create it using this meetings interface, but if I use the web interface, I can. So I'll choose Hilleberg and now I've chosen a Hilleberg tent and it shows up. And if I go in, if there's other participants in this meeting, they will also see this not as a text, but they'll actually see it as a proper quiz that will interface properly with Microsoft Forms. Now, I do hope that one day uh, my client will be upgraded and that'll be a lot easier than me having to create, you know, real meeting me and ghost me. And you might say, well, why not just do everything through the web interface then? Why not just run your whole meeting here? Because I'm limited in my other options. So underneath here, you know, I'm limited around, you know, some of the things that I can do um, in the meeting. And, and one of the most important things for me, for example, is in the actual true client, I can do things like breakout rooms. And I have a little few more options in here and I actually find it easier to share from this client. So there's a trick of how we can sneak and do a workaround in order to put forms into Teams meetings, even if our client hasn't been upgraded yet. I hope that was useful for you and you're thinking, wow, that's a cool workaround. And at some point, I'm sure Microsoft will uh, put that feature directly into the Teams client. But for now, that's a way of getting around it and really getting that functionality that I think really adds a lot of value to your class. If you think this video added value to your knowledge, then I hope you'll hit the like button. And if you want more videos like this, subscribe. Of course, share it with colleagues that might also benefit from this. And there's more videos on this channel that you might be interested in. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.